Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone. Scott Gallagher here with One Marketing. We've got a really exciting presentation for you today. We're getting into uh, summertime, and we've got quite a few uh, small business owners on the line right now, and this is an excellent time to start considering about what's going to be going on in Q4 of this year and you know, getting some of your uh, some of your marketing in alignment. Now, I've just got a few people coming on the line still. We typically have a few late stragglers for the first five minutes or so as we start this. So um, I just want to quick do, do a quick little sound check. Uh, John says, your music is coming through. Yeah, we stopped that. I, you know, kind of, I, I like to start these a little bit early and kind of have, you know, some music in the background, but uh, I'm a little bit late starting today or on time, but nonetheless, let's get going. Now, some of you don't know who I am. Uh, some of you do. So I'm just going to take two minutes here, just tell you a little bit about myself. Hopefully I can earn the right to get a few minutes of your time today, 45 minutes of your time to go through with some of this. I want to feed you with pure content, stuff that you can implement immediately and change your company and ultimately in, in improve your lives. Nonetheless, my name is Scott Gallagher. I'm a, I'm a dad. Uh, there's my boy. Uh, we do a lot of camping and, and, and whatnot. I've got a daughter that's 17 years old as well. I enjoy snowboarding, jumping out of airplanes, and I, uh, I, I write. I'm actually starting my second book right now. I had my first book published a couple of years ago. and It's been a lot of fun. Got and spent a lot of money on university, but after I got that degree in 2005, I moved to the United States from Canada and with not too much, and that's when really I started One Marketing. I also started Local Marketing Source in 2009, which is an education portal, as well as a delivery company, uh, NaparX. Now, you know, some of the things I've written about is, you know, of course, in marketing, uh, published, and uh, you, you can get the book. It's Internet Marketing for Small Business, uh, anywhere online, and I don't have any uh, shelf space yet, but that's what I'm hoping for with my second book. And, of course, I enjoy doing a lot of speaking engagements as well. All right, enough about me. Today, what you're going to learn, as we talked about, is the three pillars of local search. These are the three aspects. Now, what is this going to give you? Is It's going to give you everything that is required to rank number one on the search engines. Make sure I'm sharing my right screen here. In the local results, we're ta talking about ranking businesses. We're ranking, or sorry, ranking websites. We're ranking businesses. I'm also going to give you a link that you can download our review acquisition system. Now, <laughs> I got an email yesterday from my sister. She's a chiropractor in Australia, and she works for another chiropractic firm that has a relationship with a local SEO firm. And I get an email from my sister yesterday that sent out to all her friends and family that says, hey, and it was a forwarded message from her boss. And the message said, hey, our SEO team wants us to send out all these emails and ask to go and get a whole bunch of reviews. And I thought, well, I'm in the United States. My family is in Canada. My sister has friends around the globe, and they're getting them to leave reviews for this local chiropractic firm. Well, come on. They're not real patients, right? So if you want to be a patient, a part of that firm, and if you even sniffed wind that these reviews that you're reading are, are fake, how is that going to make you feel? It's probably not going to make you feel very good. The fact of the matter is, is that's going to hurt you. <laughs> reviews are a big piece. I'm going to tell you a couple of things about reviews that are really going to change your, your perspective on it. And that alone, that is one of the three. You just wait, all right? So I'm going to give you a link to download that. I'm going to spend two minutes to to, to get through all of that. Now, before we get going, there's a couple of things that business owners should have a management knowledge of regardless if they are doing this themselves, if they've got a marketing person or a secretarial person doing it for them, or if they've hired an agency. Successful business owners are going to have systems to measure the performance of the business online. So in the world that we're talking about, those things that are important, of course, are rankings for your top 
keyword. Now, a lot of marketers are going to give you a whole list. You know, we're going to rank 100 keywords. We're going to rank 50 keywords. It's it's bull. You know, there's there's 101 keyword tools that are out there. And the fact of the matter is, is if you blow off the dust of your marketing books and you go and look at what keyword research is, is it falls under the marketing umbrella of marketing research. It's understanding your target audience. It's understanding the terms. So I work with chiropractors. I work with trucking companies and courier firms. You take chiropractors, for example, what are their core terms going to be in, in the world of keywords? Their core terms are going to be a chiropractor and chiropractic. That's what they are. Okay, there's really not very many core terms for every type of business. And then there's core, there's, there's core modifiers, maybe a pediatric chiropractor or a symptom. I, my knees hurt, my back hurts, or conditions, sciatica. So every business has got a core term. Every business has got a small handful of modifiers. And then you've got your geomod, which is your geographical modifier, your city, your town, your zip code, your airport codes. And that's your keyword list, all the combinations and permutations of that. It's not that complex. So you want to measure the rankings of those three factors of your keywords. Of course, you want to measure, okay, rankings are great, but is it actually bringing me new patients or new clients? So you want to measure your referrals, and there are ways to get that in. Now, I'm going to talk something about citations. You want to know where your citations are. I'll, I'll tell you that in a moment. But it all comes down to this. How much business is it bringing in? Okay, great. If it's bringing in X number of business, what does it cost? Bottom line, that's it. You as a manager have got to have that in place to be able to manage that. Otherwise, well, successful business owners do this. Otherwise, you're not going to be as successful as you can be. Now, it just as an example here, you know, uh, one of my local clients here in the Chicago land area, uh, this is one of our testimonials from Doc Palak. After she hired us, 12 months after hiring us, uh, she was able to open a second location, hire a second doctor. They were on target. They did end up hiring a, a third doctor. And 80% of their patients all come from Google searches. It's incredible the impact that the placement has. When we start to look at items like what is the traffic for the number one spot versus the number two spot versus the number three spot, it's significant. So the fact that you're even on page one, big deal. If you're, if, if you're number two, you've heard it before. If you're number two, you're the first loser. All right, I'm just going to take two minutes here. And then we're going to get into some strategy. Hi, I'm Dan Conaty from Brooks Courier Service, located in Wilmington, Delaware. And I wanted to say a few words about uh, Scott Gallagher, who we met here at the uh, NCAA several years ago. Scott provided us with uh, nice marketing materials that we're able to hand out to uh, potential customers that have very nice uh, graphics and so forth. So we've been very pleased with the service that we have received. Hello, my name's Larry Schwartz. I'm president of Barron Messenger Service out of sunny South Florida. We recently uh, did search engine optimization with Scott Gallagher, and he got us to the number two spot in less than six months. Hi, my name is Mark Spencer from Wireless Consulting in New York. I've been working with Scott Gallagher, uh, who offered us some incredible insight and some awesome internet marketing strategies that really helped our company. What I liked about Scott was real, solid principles on ongoing business. I had the course in my hands physically for about two weeks and already I've got two clients from just using the information in one to one. Uh, I had uh, five clients and that allowed me to uh, quit my job. Uh, I was able to go out and get my first client within the first few weeks. 
Hi, my name is Rob Johnstone. I'm with Priority Express Courier in Philadelphia and Edison, New Jersey. We realized that we need a little more direct impact and get right. in front of customers more consistently. And that's what Scott's really helped us with, with our uh, emailing. Let's uh, start and get, uh, let's go and take a look at uh, some of the three pillars and some strategy now. All right. That's just to hear some of what a client, some of the results that others that have gotten out there. Uh, if, if, if you aren't focusing your efforts as being a marketing individual as opposed to an SEO individual, you are going to fail. Mark my words. I just went through, I have a podcast that I do once a week and it's a radio show. And, uh, you know, yesterday I went through the evolution of SEO right from, you know, day one, 1992, all the way through to 2015. And, you know, when I really took the time to break this down and, and analyze it and, and write it out and, and look at it and all the different aspects of it, it's, you know, the changes started six, seven years ago. But my industry, I get so frustrated at my industry because my industry just likes to make stuff up. You, you know, I go to an Internet marketing conference a year and a half, two years ago. And they're talking about these avatars and whatnot and everybody, oh, this is all the new buzz and this is what you got to get into and you got to go and look at this. And I'm like, oh, so excited. I sit down and all they learn about is it's just customer segmentation. You know, the aspects of reviews where SEOers now are really trying to start to get reviews. Wait till you see a review acquisition strategy. You're going to be blown away by it. It's fantastic. But it's not a violation of the terms and conditions of anything that's out there. And it's real marketing. And what, you know, what real marketing really is, well, let me tell you a little story. I'll say, actually, I'll save it till we get to there. Let's move on. I don't have all the time in the world here. And I want you guys to walk out with some real, uh, real value. So these are the three pillars of local search that we're going to look at. Okay, profiles, citations. And then finally, reviews and how all three of these components are important and some of the things that you can do immediately to make the changes uh, to, to get that. Now, profiles, uh, when we take a look at it, you know, as an example, we've got profiles broken into three categories, major search engines, major, major data providers and secondary data providers. Under the world of major search engines, you know, that you see right here, I'm giving you a list of, of four of them. There's a lot of other major search engines that, that are out there. But again, it's, you know, it's market share and, and whatnot. And uh, Google Places or Google alone has an 83% market share. So they're the, the big players that are out there. But you do need to be listed effectively. I'm going to, when I say effectively, I'm going to tell you in the next slide what's important to have listed on on these things on an ongoing basis. And marketing is like paddling upstream. You got to think of your profiles as like paddling in a uh, in a canoe up upstream in a river. You've got to keep paddling, and slowly, slowly and surely, you're going to get there. But as soon as you stop, you go back. You know, some of your major da data providers here. Again, this is a list of four. Uh, there's three major information providers in the United States that are really important to be a part of. You know, one thing that I see missed very, very frequently is if you're not listed here, folks, you know, or you don't have what I'm going to talk about your NAP, you know, these are two key things that you see very, very frequently that, you know, they're missed out. All right. And there's a couple of other major ones that are, are critical. Uh, but just check out Axiom. You'll be surprised of how maybe either A, wrong the information is or whatnot, but that's a critical one because a lot of the major search engines pull information from Axiom. All, all the major secondary data providers that you see right here pull data from major data providers and search engines. And again, the list of secondary data providers, as an example, we acquire 10 to 20 new profiles on a monthly basis, and the list can go into the hundreds but it's an ongoing process. So with profiles and focusing in on profiles, it's important to have continued acquisition of profiles. Now, just some of the tips to be able to look at it, you know, we call things like our NAP. That's gonna be your name, address, and, and phone number. And with these profiles, each one you wanna complete at 100%. And the you should not be pulling information from anybody else. This should be completely, you know, and in the, in the description, when we talked about your keywords, your core term, your core modifier, and your geomod, that's where you put it into your description. Utilize all five categories. 
make sure it's there. So your description should be very compelling. Uh, discuss your brand, your philosophy, because, you know, for example, chiropractors, there's multiple types of chiropractors that exist. There's the chiropractor that injects the flow of Jesus Christ when they do an adjustment on one end of the spectrum. Then on the other end of the spectrum, there's the chiropractor that just says surgery and drugs are the solution. So the you know the philosophical aspects are built right into you know your your messages or your symptoms or you know if you're a delivery company your service areas the types of businesses are you medical you know are you on demand et cetera et cetera you got to have a physical address if you don't have a physical address you know these are for your electricians that are uh, working out of their house you have to put your address you have to put your physical address you have to. So you establish your NAP, that's your name, address, and a phone number. If it's, you know, my address is North Harrison Street. I type N Harrison ST. It should always be N Harrison ST, you know, numerical sign 106 instead of unit 106 or whatnot. You got to keep it consistent all the way through. You know, testimonials and videos and whatnot, uh, utilize them. That's a big thing. Mark my words, video is about a 15% of the ranking. Get testimonial videos on there. I'll talk about that in a little bit, what's important. Always maximize as many categories as you can, like I was saying. Reminder again, testimonials and reviews are critical to these profiles. We'll talk about that as we go along. And have at least five business photos. And the search engines now have, and these profiles now have the ability to look at photos and determine the quality of that photo and what's in that photo. So get it professionally done or, or know what you're doing with lighting and angles of the front of buildings, of the inside of your office space. Mark my words, that's about 12% of the weight of the ranking as the quality and how many photos and what are the photos of. In all these profiles Google goes and looks at all the hundred profiles that are out there and if it sees this consistency well folks blow off the dust of your brand of your marketing books that's branding 101 McDonald's there you walk in you know they're all the same type of food they all taste the same and they all have the same look and feel it's branding your profiles I've got to follow branding principles of marketing otherwise you're gonna get penalized And these are the little things that get you to the number one spot other than number two, three, or four. It's these little things. Having the consistency. You know, stay away from 800 numbers. I said make sure you have an address. Don't have multiple pages for, mul you know, a single location. There's a quick address. Pull out your pen and paper. I got a couple of notes that you're going to want to take in a few moments as we move forward. Don't use tracking numbers, not for local. Big controversial discussion. Don't use them. All right, moving on. Now, pillar number two. So you got an idea of profiles, of what's important. And I gave you a couple of tips to tweak the consistency of your nap and to have continuous acquisition. Those two tweaks, and of course, to follow the, the best practices of the profiles. That alone is going to make a major impact. Number two, citations and links. You know, what is a citation, first off? It's just a web reference. Same thing as a link. A citation and a link, they are the same. They reference a business and a location and, and whatnot. You know, citations when web web references, you get more authority when you utilize your NAP, your name, address, and phone number in the consistency that we discussed. And different places for citations are going to be in the data providers that we were talking about. Okay, that's number one. But they're low-value citations. A lot of public sources that are out there. We're going to talk some of those. Now, we group citations mostly into these two right here that are location based sites and theme based sites those two are the caveats of citations if you want to be focusing on citations and links get a couple of these a month that's it just a couple and we'll talk about what are high value 
two or three pieces of exposure a month. Not a lot. And so we're going to talk about acquisition strategies on how to get some of these as well. Got about 25 minutes left in the presentation. I'm trying to get through with this. I, I like to keep it to about 45 minutes, get into some questions. Um, Mike, I just noticed somebody asking questions. Please go ahead, type your questions in. I'll reserve the questions to the end to answer them. Um, this is a good question regarding paid services. I, I will tell you about those paid services, Mike, and tell you exactly how I feel about it and why uh, everything is managed in-house uh, for us and with my education company. By the way, that's Local Marketing Source. I don't know if you're familiar. I, I also own and teach um, at LMS. And, and again, you know, everything is taught to do it in-house. So I'll address that, Mike. Uh, but anyhow, lo location-based websites. Uh, we're going to look at first here, you know, uh, there's local search engines that you can find and local directories and blogs. You can do different searches to find things like this. Just type in your Geomod, you know, Chicago blog, uh, Chicago directory, uh, Chicago magazine, uh, Chicago publication. Um, you, you know, you can get a whole list of different types of location-based sites by using a Geomod and then your modifier for searches, you know, with directories here you know, your Geomod and directory and, and whatnot. So there's a variety of different location-based sites. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're going to talk a different strategy moving forward as well, like the Chamber of Commerce and the local newspapers as well that are location-based sites that you can find in strategies. When we get to the strategy aspect, strategies how to get into the local newspaper with ease. And then there's theme-based sites, you know, in this example, a uh, theme would be, you know, I'm showing an example of chiropractors and, and wellness. Um, and, and that focuses in on the topics and, and the keywords. Remember, the keywords are your core term and your core modifiers. Everything around marketing starts with, a, with your keyword or your core term and your modifiers. So when we're doing searches to find theme-related websites, you know, we're going to focus in on the, the core terms. Of course, there's small social networking sites that are out there, but more importantly, doing some of your searches, it's the same thing. Type in your theme words and, you know, directory or blog. And again, I'm going to show you in a moment, you know, a theme word, magazine, theme word, um, journal. So here's an example. That, that client actually, uh, Dr. Plack that I was talking about at the beginning, my writers wrote an article, and it was on gluten-free toothpaste. I read the article, and I went, this is a damn good article. I didn't know that there was anything about gluten-free toothpaste. I know gluten-free is a big thing. Let's talk to the doc and see what we can do with this. We spoke to the doc. The doc read the article said, this is great. Here's a couple of tweaks to add for some technical terms. We took that. That article was then published in a medical journal. What a massive authoritative citation and web reference for that doctor. You think the search engines liked that piece of exposure? They loved it, and my writers wrote it. It's easier than you think to get into these magazines. I'm sitting here with a magazine on my desk, Chiropractic Economics. It's so easy to get into stuff when you find them and do searches. You know, social media, a lot of people spend a lot of time and effort in the social media. This is where you should be spending your least amount of time and effort. Set them up, set up a distribution like HootSuite, and integrate that with your content. Set it and forget it. Monitor it to be notified when you've got engagement. And get involved when people engage with you. Otherwise, set it and forget it. It's there to share your authority and really effective marketing at the end of the day is building authority with your audience. And so when you're creating all of these other pieces of exposure and whatnot and, you know, you get good stories and whatnot. Just a quick list uh, of some non-conventional citations or pieces of exposure as well. This is thinking outside of the box. These are the types of citations that are going to differentiate you among a competitor. 
So for example, if you're a part of the local chamber of commerce, host a chamber party. Guess what? That chamber of commerce posts it on their website. You now have citations and exposure and links on a local chamber of commerce website for hosting a little party. And they want businesses to do that type of stuff. You know, if you're around a retail location, red box or you know atms this is a massive piece of authority you know if your building is more than 50 years old you can get it registered I've, or or is 100 years old excuse me we're encouraging our clients to create books to write books it's a lot easier than you think all right now how do we write a book for our client we ask our clients to put together a presentation we work with them to get a piece of present a presentation a powerpoint presentation most you know most chiropractors for example have these things um you know to do it for for when we were working with delivery firms we'd have you know templates and then we would just have the business owner come in and and you know talk and we record the audio now that we've got that we've got a video with a presentation of a webinar that we, we, we have done. We then transcribe that presentation. We now have a transcription typed out of the owner that spoke, and it's about 60 pages, a one, one page per minute. We then take that transcription and edit it into a book, and that 60 pages edited turns into about 120 pages in a 6 by 9 book. We get that printed from Create Space for $2.30. You now have a book that's linked to a business. The owner invested about two hours of their time that they're able to give away to prospects, that they get exposure about. You now have a piece of material that you can have a press release that the local newspapers are going to write about. It's amazing. It's an amazing citation. You offer free Wi-Fi. In your office, if you've got sitting space, you're now on a bunch of directories. Sponsoring local events, you throw 50 bucks to your local college, that educational institute is now recognizing you and your business on their site. That's trust and authority. You've got products that you sell. Sell something online. If you're running a delivery company, you know how many delivery companies have online order entry? but they don't take a credit card online, big deal. You know, check-ins, weather stations, cellular antennas, add a webcam and get in directories there. Depending on your business, you add install a webcam in the back of your warehouse so your existing clients can log in and see what's going on. You've added tremendous value. You've got additional citations. It's marketing. You're adding value to your audience when you think about adding value to your audience you're going to get the best citations now some strategies to get citations you know citation acquisition strategies obviously look at your competitors what's going on with them one neat thing about google when you do when you take your competitors nap as well as their business name, and then you do a search for them, Google is going to give you a list of their citations and prioritize them, number one, two. So you now have a competitive list, and you can go and look, and you really want to get the top ten citations of your competitors. Where are they listed? You're going to find some new things. good list to find some stuff now one thing you're gonna find 99 well nine times out of ten is that the citations that we talked about already are gonna ha have greater value than the top citations from your competitors it's amazing Also do a search for your number one keyword to find out the priority list of competitors. You know, I was talking about local directories, publications, different networking groups. Go ahead, join the Chamber of Commerce. 
and other networking groups. It's an easy way to get citations. It's like 20 bucks a month for my local ch chamber, not to mention all the value from the chamber that you actually get to it. You take their logo, attach it to the site, and link it up. You know, local networking groups, different BNI groups, you get an effective strategy to get business. Different forums, you can even build your own forum and become an authoritative figure in your niche. It's important. Look at joint ventures. You know, if you're a chiropractor, work with massage therapists. If you're if you're a delivery company, you know, work with a local shredding company. You have the same types of customers. Your customers use a similar set of vendors. You go to trade shows and identify, you go to your industry trade show and look at the vendors that are in there and work with them. If you like the volunteer, share it in your business. Put it on your blog that you or your employees were volunteering somewhere. That Mark my words, it gives a lot of trust and authority in the eyes of people. You see, it's just marketing, right? You know, I'd mentioned social media um, as well for distribution. You can get a wiki page that perhaps it's on there, you know, if you try to create viable content. But I, I, I don't spend a lot of time. Mark my words. All right, number three, reviews. You know, you notice review sites, some of them are also profile sites. Most profile sites allow for reviews, but not all review sites are all profile sites. But this, when we talk about reviews, is not talking about the actual profile sites. So let's, what are we talking about with reviews? Now, reviews do three things, all right? They influence your rankings. If you get snipped last week or two weeks ago, Yelp has publicly denounced that they have built and scoured the internet looking for solicitation of reviews, and they're ousting companies by exposing this aspect. It's pretty impressive. As time goes on, if we look at how internet marketing has changed, at least in the last 12 years that I've been in it, the future of internet marketing is going to be that these businesses are going to get better, better and better and better at sniffing out fake reviews. They are already very good at it. It influences your rankings if you're even caught with fake reviews. Don't even have family members that are tied to you on your social profiles. They see all of this stuff, guys. Your fingerprint on the internet is there. Don't fake it. It also helps conversion. Now, with our review acquisition strategy that I'm going to talk about in a few moments, you identify your best customers that have already vocalized a great liking for your business, the heroes of the company, the ones that leave you the testimonials, the big cheerleaders of the business. I had a client that when they started with us, a dental client, had a review ranking of 2.3. And the industry standard was 2.8. And we have to get that up. We have to change that. Now, I had a conversation with the manager of the business, and I said, you know, we've got to get, we've got to implement the review strategy. We've got, and she sat me down, and she says, Scott, here's the problem. We can try to get more reviews that are out there by people that seem to be happy. But the fact is, is that there are people that are leaving negative reviews and all the reviews have a general consistency. I said, yeah, I noticed that. I said, so when you've got a group of people that are consistently saying negative things about a business, chances are you should probably change something about that business. Wouldn't you agree? She, the manager, agreed with me. The challenges were with the doctor. 
the patients felt like the doctor was there for the money and not for the well-being of the patients. How the hell do you have a conversation with a doctor about the way that she conducts her practice? It's a tough position as a marketer to sit down with that client and say, you've got to be nicer to your patients. You've got to put on a dog and pony show to a certain degree. You've got to put on a show. You've got to make these people feel welcome. You've got to make them feel comfortable. I know they didn't teach you that in dental school, but in psychology classes and in marketing classes, they taught us this type of stuff. And you've got to get better. That's, you know, you're running a business. You're not just fixing a tooth. And I can't help you get to number one on Google until you run a better business. That's a tough conversation to have with a client. But we had to have it. Now, their reviews are a 3.9 out of 5. They started at 2.3. The industry average in their area is a 2.8. And they're at a 3.9. Almost 4. Four out of five stars. That's practically unheard of in their industry. It's the marketing stuff that make changes to the business that ultimately help. And when that ranking is there, of course Google wants to send people to businesses that have happy customers. And then third that's missed is reviews establish, when done properly, your service area. So a delivery company that works in Chicago but has their warehouse up in the northwest suburbs and wants to service all of Chicagoland has to establish service area. There are ways to strategically work with your existing customers to massively increase your service area or your propensity to show up. I have a chiropractic client in my local community well, if you know Chicago and Algonquin, and they're getting patients from Schaumburg. That's about 12 miles away. The average chiropractic service area that Google typically shows is about a five-mile radius. and Google is showing 12 miles away. All right, I got to move on here. Um, but you want to implement your review acquisition strategy. It's critical. Now, we're going to go through what, what the review acquisition strategy is and some of the components, but before, understand what the components of reviews are. You've got your profiles. I've talked about those. You've got filters that exist. There's a variety of different filters. We see it and hear it all the time. Review filters in, in Yelp. In other words, the search engines don't want to show reviews that they think are fake or that they think aren't going to offer value to a business. We could talk all day long. I could have just a whole web book course on filters alone. I've been studying them significantly. It's amazing. Again, your review acquisition strategies, how to get strategies, how not to violate the terms and conditions, how to do it right with a marketing hat on and not an egotistical, selfish SEO hat. And then, of course, some of the review sites. All right. Now, to do some of this, uh, one of the very important things, again, is to drive education to build authority. Drive education to your customers in subtle ways to help you build authority about yourself as a business. You know, you can do that with email marketing is important. You've got to have email marketing channels in place. I'll show you that in a moment. Word uh, blogs. Uh, blog in place. I gave a couple of examples already why a blog was important to have that as a distribution channel to build authority to your uh, audience. Uh, creating content that's on uh, geo sites and theme related sites. So these, you know, these types of citations that we were talking about, remember when we we're talking about the themes and the geo, you know, the type of content that's going to be on there that's important that the audience is going to consume that drives them back to here. And here, and then you're constantly communicating them with, with them from here to give them education 
So they ultimately talk about you. So you drive education to the end users to get your system of reviews. Now, very briefly here, testimonials. There's a difference between reviews and testimonials. Uh, testimonial is somebody speaking about you. You know, you've quoted them. Uh, you're quoting them in your material. You have permission to quote them. Uh, of course, video is very, very good. One thing that we don't have right now is video reviews that are integrated into the review sites. I think there's one review site that's, you know, testing that. Uh, but, of course, that's going to be mainstream. I, I mean, us as human beings, we, we absorb the most emotion and communication through visual aspects. At least 55% of the weight is through visual. 37 is through audio or tone. And only 7% are words. So video reviews are, are the future. They are going to come. Mark my words on that. They are going to be there. But today we've only got video testimonials. And you can take these testimonials and embed them with something called a rich snippet into your website. And then have it transcribed by Google. And guess what? You got it. Have them show up in the Google review system. These are real testimonials with real people. And what did Google just launch two weeks ago? Was their photo automatically? They're already implementing facial recognition into their social paradigm. So when you've got video reviews, yes, guess what? Google knows who's leaving that review. Google knows to analyze tonality and whatnot to determine the authenticity of that. So if you have a celebrity, if you own a a hot dog stand in Chicago and you have a celebrity that stopped by because all the hot dog stands have the celebrities pictures that are up there pull out your iPhone and take video of them because it's gonna be very important in the future you know of course but don't overdo it you're looking for authenticity you're looking for rawness here's something that I was mentioning earlier about a study that was done by Moravium uh, the, you know, three influences of human behavior, you know, aspects of visual. But we're looking for real stuff here. We're looking for raw, authentic, raw, 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 we're happy. Not go and leave me a review. No, this is when a patient walks out and gets an adjustment and lifts up their arms and says, damn, I feel good. All right, Mr. Patient, this is what we're going to do. Here's a card. Well, let's get into our review acquisition strategy. This is what you're going to download, okay? Um, you know, I, I've talked about all this stuff. This, you know, you know, and, and this thing that you're going to download is, you know, the overview of reviews, blah 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 blah. And you could read it. It's got templates and stuff in it, and all great stuff. But essentially, here's the system. Get an adjustment. I feel great. Ah, oh, secretary. Let's get your next appointment. You know, I feel great. Oh, you know what, Mr. Scott? I'll tell you what. Here's a little postcard. Here's the front of the postcard. Here's the back of the postcard. If you don't mind telling the world about how good you feel, that will help us make other people feel great too. Oh, you know what? That'd be great. I'll take that card. You know what, Mr. Patient? Take that card. Go home. You can either scan. We Sometimes we'll put a QR code you know, right here. Go ahead, scan it with your phone or go to this address right here. Now, this is where the beauty comes in. But at the same time, Mr. Patient, why don't you give me your email address? I'll make this easy for you. Give me your email address, and I'll send you an email. All right, boom. You got two ways now. You've collected the email address, and you've given the patient one of these branded cards. Both of them guide it to this location right here. We're going to take a look at how this works. They go to this website, or once you've collected the patients, so either the patient will do this, or customer, what, no, I'm going to use this one. We're going to see this in action. Yeah, that's the email address I wanted to use, whoops. Okay, they put it in, they hit submit. It goes into our email autoresponder. They get tagged. 
We now have the ability to create an email marketing list, which by the way, email marketing is still the number one internet marketing strategy on the internet today when you've got an opted in list. In other words, we've got permission to email these people right here. You know, you can have whatever thank you page you want here. Maybe put a little video or whatnot. They can leave comments and interact. You can have them, you know, go to Facebook or, or whatnot. But what's awesome is you go back into your, you know, we run this for all of our clients through Infusionsoft. Or you can utilize the Scott or the um, the clients or your own email autoresponder. But you can see here, patient email was now put in. When we go and look at this particular email tag. Boom. They're now put on to an autoresponder sequence. You can see here, they're going to get a variety of emails that are going to sent, going to be sent. We can add them to different follow-up sequences if, if necessary. We can put uh, add different tags to them. So you see here, this is okay. This person came in through the review acquisition, but you know what? What have we ultimately sent them? In other words, you now have full marketing control of your top customers and you can track right through these systems what they've done. So you can just take an example here. All right, sorry, I'm getting lost here, my, my bad. And I can see all the activity here, you know, so-and-so filled this out. Somebody clicked on this email here uh, three minutes ago, you know, what have they done? And you can get a good understanding of reports to have an understand, understanding ultimately of what your heroes are doing. And now you can communicate with people that left reviews in your own environment. Think about this, guys. Think about how powerful this is. You can't go and communicate in a group with everybody that left your reviews in Yelp. Yelp doesn't allow you to do that. You don't have ownership of that. You now have ownership of all your audience that left you reviews. You build that in. So with these three aspects that I talked about today with citations, profiles, and reviews, I gave you two or three tips on each one to tweak that are the big things that I'm telling you 90% of the audience and people out there don't do. On this webinar, I've got people right now that are a part of local marketing source I know and it's these things guys that are the tweaks so you've got three choices today you can continue to learn this and implement it in-house you can hire an agency like mine or you can do nothing now I've got some free stuff available for you that you can download today so I can earn the right to your business now, when you are working with an agency, regardless if it's me or anybody else, you've got to have certain expectations of results. You've got to know your customer value. There are ways to determine customer value. You know, a patient customer value for a chiropractic firm is between $300 and $2,400, and we've got ways to determine that value. Most of them, you know, fall in between the $1,000 to $1,500 mark. It takes two to six months to get results. You know, remember that you're trying to hire a marketing company, not an SEO company, because there's a lot of real marketing benefits from these firms. You get local public relations, press releases, you know, articles in the local magazines and news. You get video production and tracking of customers and whatnot. You get a different, you get a variety of different systems to collect raw reviews that we were talking about. You get ultimate conversions to real calls of action, social media engagement. And most importantly, customer retention and satisfaction that's increased.
All right, so the first step to go forward and look at something like this is to go to this website. Take your pen and paper and get this down right now. Go to this address. There's a three-minute video on there, and it's going to go over what our online analysis is. We spend some time and research for you trying to earn your business. We do your keyword research. Remember, I talked about all those keywords. We're going to give you that list for free. We're going to give you a report on your website that's going to have a list of tips and things that need to be changed. Remember when we talked about the competitive analysis? We'll do that research for you and identify your top competitors and the top citation sources for you. And then give you specific steps that need to be done to rank number one in conjunction with this video here or this presentation. From a conversion standpoint, we're going to do customer segmentation for you and segment your audience so you've got your collect quote unquote avatars. Provide tips and suggestions for conversions of each of the groups. These are our opinions and our thoughts. And then, of course, a system for it. This is all no charge. You get all of this. We look at your business. I hope that you look at other vendors. We're going to blow the other vendors out of the water. We're going to earn your business. Get you to number one. Get that conversion. Make sure you get a return on investment. So what do you do now? There's your link to download the review acquisition strategy. But there's my book. So I want you to stay on my email list. I'm going to continue to send out education. I also want you to sign up for a free analysis today. Here's the address for it. You could go ahead and join my membership program. It's 100 bucks a month, 30-day money-back guarantee. We'll train you. There's 100 videos on how to do all this stuff. I'll train you everything on how to do it. But we're here for my agency. I'd like you to hire us. We have exclusivity. In other words, we will never hire your competitor in your geographical area, ever. And the other aspect is, if we don't get you one or two inside of six months, fire us. You better be getting your return on investment, or, or I shouldn't be in business. You guys writing this stuff down? I'm going to move to some Q&A here in a moment. I'm just going to take a 30-second break and take a drink of my coffee. So you guys can go ahead and get your questions typed in. I don't have any questions up. I got one question. All right, Mike asks about how do you feel about paid services like Newstat or Yex, etc., that mass update citations? Well, I've never been a fan of automation, anything. There's not a lot of things on the internet for internet marketing that allow you to automate and have been successful for the long term. I automate reports. <laughs> That's easy. But the challenge comes is you need the human interaction with a lot of these authoritative sites because you need to have the voice for verification. And who are you going to hold responsible to speak with your customers to voice verify this and get the email aspects? They've got teams of people that are actually working on, on these uh, because a lot of these sites, it's a violation to have a robot to go in. In other words, Yelp, for example, does not want an automated computer to go and update profiles. They don't allow it. So they want a human being. And a big boy like Yext, well, they're not going to violate the T's and C's of big boys like Yelp. They want to work together, friendly. And so they've got teams that go in that are underpaid. The work is overseas, and the quality is a lot lower. Now, I'm not saying that those services aren't the end-all, be-all. In my company... We utilize Bright Local. 30% of our citations are acquired through Bright Local's citation acquisition. The remaining 70% are managed and acquired in-house through project managers. 
because we're focusing in on the quality citations. Now you notice sites like Newstat, Yex, and Bright Local, it's all about quantity. And then of course they've got certain elements that they rank of quality. But you are not going to find the big high quality ones that are out there. The medical journal that I refer to. The newspapers. The Chamber of Commerce. You know, the real marketing. So, these paid services satisfy the needs of one of the three pillars to a degree of about 30%. So if you employ these services, I say it gets you about 10% of the way. Those are my thoughts. Ben says, the best way to clear up bad reviews on Yelp. That's a good question. Those bad reviews are there for a reason. So there's a process that should be go going through. Number one, try if, if it's possible, feasible to face it head on, to try and satisfy that customer. How can we get them to remove it? If we got to communicate with them, we do. Sometimes that's not feasible. And if that's not feasible and if you exist, you've exhausted all options to get them to remove it, you've gone through the response aspect of it, the next piece is, is to determine how, how much authority that their review actually has. And how can we either A, bump down their authority or bump up our authority of existing reviews. Yelp is only going to show the top 10 reviews that they think are the top 10. If there's 50 in there, if there's 1,000 in there, you know, there's only the top 10 are going to show on that front page. And then somebody's got to dig deep. And 95% of people only read, you know, if that even, the, you know, they read the top two or three. So your goal is to push bad content down by creating more authoritative content. In other words, identifying, as we talked a little bit about today, the review acquisition strategy. This is sitting down and identifying the heroes in your business and how to communicate with them and ensure that their profiles on Yelp have authority. Because if they just go and create an account today and go and leave a review today, their review is going to be filtered out. That's about as much as I can tell you without actually looking at the situation. Ben, if you are a, uh, a business owner, um, I think you'd be silly not to take us up on our offer of our analysis. We're going to be able to pull some of that out and look at it and look at the challenges and look at a strategy. Whether you hire us or, hire us or not, you'll get that cleared out. Well, I don't have any more questions that are posted here, folks. Hello. I'm sure that you're here because you're interested in learning more about what our free online marketing plan for local businesses is all about. Well, it's just 15 minutes of your time. And once you're done, you're going to walk away with a complete one-year plan on all the right internet marketing strategies that we use for our clients to get them the number one on Google. Now, One Marketing is a professional internet marketing firm specializing with local businesses with proven strategies to increase your customer volume, increase your revenues, and really take your business to the next level by getting your internet marketing right. Now, we're the authors of the Complete Guide to Internet Marketing for Small Businesses. We're members of several different national and regional trade associations. And we've had the opportunity to speak at a number of different events, including those events in the internet marketing community, as well as many different trade associations. Now, by signing up to our free online marketing plan, we're going to follow up with a phone call to set a time to give you all of this information. Now, during this time, we're going to look at two main areas of your business. First, we're going to look at driving qualified traffic, and next, converting that traffic into customers. 
Driving qualified traffic is the first critical piece in generating leads. Now during this stage, we're going to provide you with a keyword research report of your five top converting keywords. We're also going to give you an on-site website report, exactly what is wrong with your website from the eyes of the search engine. You're also going to get a competitive analysis report on why competitors are outranking you on Google and which competitive strategies need to be evaluated. And we'll also give you specific steps to create the right mix of online exposure so you can rank high in the search engines. Now that you've got a plan to drive qualified customers to your business, optimizing that conversion is next. Now when we're looking at conversion, during the free online marketing analysis, we're going to provide you with an audience group analysis. Now this analysis will help you understand specifically what audiences to speak to and what messages to convey to them. And we'll also identify the core objective and the minimum objective of each specific audience group. We'll also get you a list of tips and suggestions that you can use to improve your conversion on all your online media, like your website. And finally, we're going to give you a system of measurement that you can implement immediately to properly measure all of your internet marketing activity, like your costs and results. Now right here on this page is a form. Just give us your information and hit the submit button and we'll be in contact with you shortly. Or you can expedite that and give us a call at 847-807-4382. And we look forward to speaking with you.